Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. All right, so today we're going to discuss a basic approach to renal ultrasound. Like with any other study, you want to get a sense of what's going on with the patient, history, any sort of priors. Um, things that may be useful to know also are, you know, what are they really looking for? A lot of times we do these sort of studies in the setting of acute kidney injury. Um, you're looking frequently for hydronephrosis or obstruction. Uh, uncommonly, you're going to be looking for focal lesions or vascular compromise. So just having a sense of what they're really asking is going to be important. Um, so with, you know, as with any study, we're going to first take a look at limitations. You're going to see, especially if you're QAing the study, uh, an ultrasound study, you see if there's all the appropriate images or any sort of issues in obtaining the images. And then we're going to go through the provided anatomy. Um, we'll look at each kidney in turn. We'll look at the bladder as its image, the distal ureters, any sort of incidentally imaged pelvic anatomy. And then just as like a last check, I'd, I, I always make it a point to look at all the incidentally imaged other solid organs or portions of the abdominal pelvic anatomy. All right, let's get started. So we have here um, uh, ultrasound images of the bilateral kidneys. And let's see, we've got the right, we've got the left. And then as you go down, you'll see that we also have the bladder, you know, in multiple planes, and we have color Doppler uh, on those. Okay, and so kind of the first thing you want to think about is, are, do we have multiple images of each kidney? Um, do we have measurements in uh, long axis and short axis at multiple areas? Um, you want to see multiple planes through the bladder. Um, if you've got a male patient, you want to make sure that we're seeing the, um, the prostate. If there's a concern for infection or recurrent UTIs or, you know, um, or if there's a concern for bladder obstruction, you want to get post void images. So one of the first things we'll do is take a look at you know, each, you know, each kidney in turn, and you want to get a sense as to whether there's normal morphology, positioning of the kidney, and you want to get a sense of overall echogenicity of the renal parenchyma. Um, look for different, let's see on, on an image such as this, differential echogenicity of the renal medulla and cortex, look for focal lesions, look for little focal fo um, areas of echogenicity, which make you think of calculi, um, look for any kind of collections around the kidney, within the kidney. Uh, and for any sort of thing you see, you want to also check on a correlate color Doppler image. So if you don't have a color Doppler image, it's going to be difficult to tell whether um, an abnormality is cystic or solid, or if it's a vascular abnormality. Um, on, so we're again to see looking at this right kidney there, there, we should be provided images that capture also the collecting system and that'll be useful to getting a sense as to um, whether this hydronephrosis we could see that in the kind of renal hilum I don't know here that we, ha we specifically have something that captures very clearly um, the proximal ureter so we're going to do that process for the right kidney we'll pre repeat the same thing for the left kidney and then eventually we're going to take a look at the bladder um, so the bladder, um, you want to get a sense of its overall uh, appearance. Is it distended? Is it decompressed? Do we see wall thickening um, accounting for uh, the degree to which it's extended? Um, you want to also make sure, you know, are we really looking at the bladder? You know, um, is it some other cystic st structure in the, in, the, in the pelvis? You, you know, you can correlate with prior imaging, correlate with post void images, uh, make sure that there are ureteral jets if that is that's obtained. Um, and so you want to make sure, you know, uh, that on the color doppel images, you can see both ureteral jets, you have to, you know, if you're scanning yourself or QA with the technologist, generally, it's five minutes of continuous observation before you can kind of see that the ureteral jets are not actually visualized, um, and make sure that the, um, uh, the settings for uh, visualizing are optimized for visual, you know, for seeing those ureteral jets both left and right. Um, you you want to get a sense, you know, especially if you're not seeing them, if there's a concern for stone or hydronephrosis, that you look in the area of the distal ureters in the ureteral vesicular junction. Um, 
if you can't see it in certain patients, if you want to do some problem solving, uh, you know, in female patients, um, those who might be amenable to problem solving via, uh, you know, what would be a slightly more invasive exam, tra transvaginal approach can sometimes be used as a problem solving technique to kind of visualize the uh, ureteral vesicular junction a little bit more clearly. Um, you want to change uh, for use of spatial compounding um, to, to help see shadow and twink twinkling artifact. Um, and then if there's any sort of concern about whether, you know, any abnormality within the bladder lumen or attached to the wall or external to the adjacent to the bladder um, has flow in it or is a vascular structure, you definitely want to check anything that you see on colored Doppler. Um, one of major pitfall in addition to kind of uncommon circumstances where you might see the, you know, uh, you know, Again, you have to be very clear that you're looking at the bladder here. Um, you want you want just to be very sure about the anatomy. In addition to figuring out that that is the bladder, you want to make sure that any sort of Foley catheter instrumentation is truly within the bladder and not within the vagina or in the prosthetic urethra. And that's going to take you know that can you can use cines, you can use um, you know uh, kind of correlating with prior imaging. That's going to be pretty useful. Okay, so in addition to looking at all those sorts of things, every one of the checks that I like to do is that. At the end of every study, I like to go back and just make sure I check all the incidentally imaged um, anatomy. You know, in when we take a look at these sort of studies, you can see quite a bit of liver. You'll see, um, you know, it's it's not common in adults to see the adrenal glands unless they're abnormal. Um, but you want to just you know compare the liver echogenicity to the renal cortex. You're going to see some paranephric. Um, you know, the paranephric fat, you're going to see the abdominal wall, you may see, you know, um, you know, at the left kidney, you may see parts of the spleen, um, you know, uh, any sort of adjacent anatomy in each of the images um, you want to take a look at. Um, frequently in, you know, the pelvis, you'll see the prostate in men, um, you'll see, uh, you know, the other um, genitourinary tract um, anatomy and you just want to make sure there's no gross abnormality there uh, as as we're looking at you know even if we're just focusing on the bladder so overall uh, just as a big picture idea as how we're going to cover um, an ultrasound of the uh, retroperitoneum or, or of the uh, or of a renal ultrasound big picture you want to take a look at what's happening with the patient understand what they're really looking for and then go through the images and make sure that we're capturing everything we need to capture. We'll go through each of the kidneys in turn, and then eventually look at the ureters, pelvic anatomy, the bladder, and then make sure that we're assessing all of the incidentally imaged anatomy.